Welcome to my podcast, uh, New Word Norm Insights. I have an amazing guest today, Mike Neville, who is a super recognizer. And I got to say, that is a cool title. And I first met Mike at the uh, third Security Tech Day hosted by the amazing Total Security Protection. And we had a stunning location on Landing 42, which just is a building which is amazing. It looks out over the River Thames. Hey, welcome to the podcast, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Thanks for welcoming me. And as I say, I, I, I might be good at recognising people, but the, the super recognisers I deal with are, uh, are, are far better than me. So I'm like the boss, the boss, the chief, rather than the uh, the, the thing. Well, um, we'll, 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 we'll see about that, because actually uh, I saw some amazing presentations from you. So, look, I've seen some of the documentaries on TV. It's always fascinating me about super recognisers, particularly the fact that it, the documentaries are based around the Met Police and stuff. Um but to me, it was truly understanding what the impacts were. And, and you met, had an awesome presentation, which was so good to watch. In fact, letting you, you know, the secret as such, um, I actually saw your presentation list on the agenda and actually made my way to the front row so I could be there to, to watch um, the presentation. So that probably serves like a good pathway into you sharing with us your background uh, to your amazing career. Yes. Yeah, so... Uh... I mean, the first thing I'd say is is the first thing I explain before I talk about me is like, what is a super recognizer? So people understand it. It's a person who never forgets a face. But my uh, because you've got natural ability. My my background though, I was uh, I come from a, a sort of long line of soldiers, and uh, my uncle was in the police. So by various means, I ended up in the military police as a young lad, and I was in Northern Ireland, and there you had to spot terrorists, which. Um, you know, you had to look at the, uh, the the photographs on the checkpoint. I remember the first person I spotted was uh, Martin McGuinness. He was a sort of IRA commander then. He was, wasn't the sort of chuckle brother uh, politician, the William Paisley that we saw later on. Uh, and then from there, I joined the Met Police. And I realised, uh, having dealt with a series of bank and post office robberies, that the, the police didn't have a system to deal with um, images like they did uh, fingerprints and DNA. So I set up this uh, system, and as I circulated images to say, do you know who this is? What I realised is that some officers were, were, were exceptional. It was a question of, are they just very busy officers, or are they there's something else going on? And that's when I met the psychologist, who's now Professor Josh Davis, and between the two of us, we, that's where the research started. And there'd been some academic research in, in America, uh, but we were the first to put it into sort of a practical use and find these people are very good at uh, identifying faces. Wow. That sounds like an amazing start to what them come known as super recognizers. So as a super rec recognizer, though, and I was very impressed in your presentation in terms of the, the success rate and stuff, maybe you could just share with the audience some of your maybe experiences and, you know, what, what comes out of it in terms of the conviction rate? Because I think there were some very impressive background details to it. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, people's identification of uh, evidence, and this is where Professor uh, Davis came from, is, is often very poor. You know, it's quite, you know, people sent to prison when six and seven people have, have identified the wrong uh, person. So it's very good to have uh, somebody who's got a sort of stunning uh, natural ability. So we know if a super recognizer sort of matches uh, several images of, of one person to uh, different crimes, there's a 92% uh, guilty plea rate, so there's not even a trial. So um, the super recognizers are very good like that. They save a lot of um, uh, police time. Uh, but in my experience, they've solved thousands of crimes. It wasn't unusual for somebody to link um, 10, 20, 30 uh, burglary crimes to uh, one person. Um the highest we ever got was um, 40, 43, a man who was a high-value high thief. And it should have been 500, but the, the police hadn't gathered the CCTV in the first place. So unless you have the CCTV, you can't uh, get them. But from a uh, major crime point of view, so the Novichok suspects in Salisbury, they were found by super recognisers. Hillsborough Inquiry, all these high-profile cases. This is where you can use people who've got this natural ability to 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 never forget a face wow hey I, I think really what the audience might like is what i had from you is where you actually give kind of like you know some background and you know talk us through something which was significant to you as a secret uh, as a super recognizer but you know how did that then pertain to you know preventing future crime and catching crime and dealing with it 
Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's so many uh, cases, like I say, that the, the highest, uh, like the uh, mur murder with uh, Alice Gross was a, uh, a teenager who was uh, followed across um, a, a bridge, a canal bridge in, in West London, and then uh, disappeared. And, and the uh, killer was actually from Eastern Europe, and he was quickly identified, and he, he'd been convicted of murder uh, in uh, in Latvia or Lithuania. And so what they had to do, the super recognised had to watch all the footage, uh, and they found him at the entering a, a canal path, and then they found him disappearing uh, from the same path uh, after about forty-five minutes, and then they found him in a shop, and he was obviously wet, wet through. Uh, you could see this, uh, but um, once uh, a, a PC went and uh, got on his bike and rode down that canal path, it took five minutes. So there's forty minutes unaccounted for. Now that the river itself had been searched already. But because what the super recognizers have found, they, they had to do it again, and they found uh, her body. It was tragic. Uh, under he, he really concealed her under a, a massive uh, log, uh, and so in those sort of cases. Uh, and Hillsborough, for example, we the, uh, the the task there was to find sixteen of the deceased people in the crowd, because uh, they wanted to know uh, if people had uh, how did they go into the ground, because of course the police had allegedly opened different gates that they shouldn't have done. And where they were when the crush happened, and I think the the super recognisers found one of the the uh, individuals, one of the lads, walk into the ground with a big smile on his face, and and that photograph was given to his mum. So it's not just about finding um, killers and thieves; sometimes it's about finding uh, victims as well. Uh, that is amazing in terms of the lengths that it goes to in terms of actually handling crime on a wider scale. And also finding somebody. I mean, look, that leads me on very nicely, actually, because you did an exercise on stage where you give a picture and then you then give some distorted pictures, and we had to we had to find them. Actually, I didn't quite well the first time after that. By the way, I was out. <laughs> More difficulty you put into it, the, the difficulty then was too much for me. But it's amazing you guys, as super recognizers, would still recognize somebody like in a crowd, whether they put on a hat, whether they're wearing glasses, you know. With the images maybe from the CCTV might be at a different angle to how you recognise that person. How do you do it? How do I do it? What we know about super recognisers is they don't uh, look, if you look at me or you, you know, with balding and uh, hair's gone slightly grey, uh, of course we weren't always like that. So people tend to look at sort of Bruce Willis and see a, or Telly Savalis and see a bald head. But the super recognisers don't look at those sort of changeable features of glasses and moustaches, you know, whatever else, you know, hair, hair on your head. They look at the the sort of things that don't change. And and so we, we uh, on an exercise, showed an image of a, an old chap taken in, nine, this image was a black and white photograph taken in 1970, so over 50 years ago. And yet they still found him in Covent Garden during the Christmas period when it's uh, really, really busy. So... That's uh, you know that's the sort of skill level they have, and I mean the test you refer to. If people want to look at the website Super Recognizers International, and there's a, a button there saying "Take the test," and it redirects you, and there's uh, there's a, a Greenwich University that the test you refer to is fourteen faces. It'll take ten minutes. If you scroll twelve out of fourteen, you might be a Super Recognizer. Wow, so you, you a Super Recognizer of twelve out of fourteen. Well, given the fact that you've done it three times, I only got it right once, I think I'm not going to be a, a recognizer, super recognizer for sure. But it's the, the, the test, another thing I would say, if, if people are watching it and they're from, a, they're not a, a white, they're black or Asian or wherever, they, they might, if they score slightly less, you still might be a super recognizer because we know there's a bias that uh, people are best at their uh, faces of their own ethnicity. And, you know, if you live in London where you get used to different faces, then... You, you might be good, so uh, don't write yourself off. You know, that's what I would say. But I think you failed. You failed you fail the test. Uh, but it's not just about uh, super recognizers. They're not just about spotting the right person. They're also able to say uh, that person is not in the the, uh, the selection, the lineup. Because what yeah. people tend to do is guess. Uh, they, they'll have a guess and uh, see what they can do. But it, that isn't uh, what super recognizers do. So, for example, with the Grenfell Tower uh, case, there was um, uh, in that it, it, there was seventeen people convicted of fraud because the super recognizer could say I've watched the concierge footage for a month and that person never entered so they definitely don't live it so they they got at different uh, aspects of that that is amazing I mean look 
I'm I'm probably not good at remembering names. Um, I'm probably good at remembering like routes if I've driven somewhere or I've gone somewhere once. I'm very good at remembering numbers. Past that, I I I think to myself, was I kind of born with that or did I learn it? But as a super recognizer, are you kind of born with this or do you learn it? No, you you're born. You can't uh, you can't teach the skill. It's in the hypothalamus. We know which part of the brain is. It's linked the uh, for for whatever reason the, the, in the brain. It's linked to uh, um, voices. So somebody who's good at uh, voice recognition is probably good at uh, face uh, recognition as well. So so we know that it's there. You can't really make it any better. We can we do train people to use it to produce um, good evidence. So we, tra we train people in all the laws and regulations around data protection and surveillance and identification. But that's really just uh, tuning it up, really. You, you can't make the actual skill any better. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes me feel okay. That actually, I'm not a super recognizer. I'm not saying I can really, really uh, learn unless I was born with it. It's a gift, right? It, it, it is absolutely a gift. I say people are interested, if they, if they go to the, the website, the, the Super Recognizer International uh, website, there, there are courses. So if you've done it, because people do, they use this job in various things. I say police and security is a very obvious one, uh, but spotting VIPs is another. But there are lots of uh, companies, this company called Yoti, Y-O-T-I, or Trust ID, that they're people who uh, check documents and make sure yeah. you're the right uh, person. And, and so there are companies that employ um, super recognizers. Face Watch is another one. You might have seen on the television about a facial recognition company that spots uh, thieves and stuff like this. They have uh, a human to say yes, I agree. That's the, that is the thief, you know, throw them out of the shop, basically. So there are there are jobs you can get jobs doing this. Wow, I, I think the office, you know, thought is well, okay, you can use super recognizers, you know, the Met Police and the crime. Um, but actually, I came on a few presentations thinking actually I can see how some of my clients can use this in the future. So you know, I mean, in terms of, of you and the business that you run. How do you, which industries can you help and how can you help? Well, as I said, you know, the police and security, uh, border guards, anything where uh, checking identity is uh, essential, that that's the good. But uh, I also think you've got the, the document checkers, but if you're in uh, hospitality and you've got a spot, uh, you know, sort of a person who's important, that, that's good. And, and I think if you're like an MP or somebody who, who met, meets lots of people, the fact if you could recall somebody's uh, face and name, then that will make you look good, you know, and, and people will vote for you because you, uh, you know, you seem friendly and nice. So uh, that's a real um, uh, benefit as well. It's just in, in everyday life. But on the downside of it, you have uh, super recognizers who downplay their uh, uh, ability because uh, they don't want to recognize people they're at primary school with or they, they saw in the cinema five years ago because people might think they're a stalker so yeah. you know it's got sort of a that that sort of ass you gotta you can't turn it off you know you can be using it at work for a good thing and then suddenly you're out and about and, you, and it becomes a, a hindrance really right wow so i suppose you know in terms of other industries using it you could use it as a reactive or proactive i mean reactive meaning that something's happened which needs then you, you know you to be able to identify something or proactive in relation to you're trying to prevent something happening in advance, right? Yes. I mean, we live in a terrible world, don't we, with terrorism and, and wickedness. And so to be able to spot somebody and then say, you know, look at the Manchester Arena with Obeidi who blew himself up there killing all those uh, teenagers or whatever. To be able to spot people like that before they do their wicked deed is is far better than finding them afterwards. Um and so there are so many people in this world who need to be spotted, you know, for example, child molesters or whatever else, or even, you know, thieves and burglars, if they can be spotted before they do it. I was speaking to an officer the other day, and he was looking for some uh, a burglar, and he, he, he saw a, a car whiz by, just by the glance of his, you know, face, he spotted this chap, and they eventually arrested him, and, and the, the guy said, it's unfair, it was unfair that this man was a super recognised man who could spot him. Uh, so easily so you know the things do work <laughs> well, amazing so so look, in close you know there's many businesses out there come to come to you because i'm right saying like you run your own business across the world right yeah so uh so you know i've just had an email this morning from the united states and our police department there have already wow. started uh, uh doing uh, some tests 
Uh, companies, as I indicated, like uh, Yoti, uh, they they have uh, the business in India and in uh, Britain. They they want to find their uh, super recognizers. Uh, and you, but you just get people sometimes who, who particularly ladies. I think the the guys there's a difference really. The men usually do it because they want to do a job in security or something like that. Some of the ladies just do the course. I think because you know it's just fascinated that they are what they are. Um, yeah. So you get a whole different type of person doing the course, but generally there's a lot. Some people are drawn to different jobs. Like there's quite a few people involved in of sort of policing and security, but also photographers. Uh, think something where there's visual, you know, because so, people you do a job if you, you you what you find easy yourself, I suppose. So that's why they, that's why it's like that. Wow. Well, I must say, meeting you again is absolutely amazing. I mean. It's lovely to talk with you. I would definitely going to keep in touch with you for sure because I came away from your first time and even now from speaking to you thinking, actually, you know, I work with many clients uh, in the industry, closely connected to kind of trying to prevent crime or, you know, or, or, or afterwards when the crime's been committed. So I think there's that. I think there's many other things. I mean, I'm really impressed by the fact actually insurance companies, you know, who, who want to know if there's been forced and activity. Like, for example, you talk about Grenfell and stuff. You know, that's, that's just absolutely it amazing so look thank you mike it's been a great time listening to you as a super recognizer and taking us through all the good that you can do and not only for the police force but other industries and i for sure will be sharing your solution in the future clients that i meet um until next time i just want to thank everybody for listening to the new world norm um and hey go and take the test like mike said i'll be very interested to see who takes the test and who gets 12 out of 14 so i'm going to actually put mike uh, in the LinkedIn profile, your address, um, so they can come and take the test. And for anybody who's listening, and you would get, get 12 out of 14, please post it, because it might be harder than you expect. Yeah, thanks, Tim. It's great. And uh, good luck with everybody who's taken the test. It's a bit of fun, but you might have a skill that could uh, help catch a lot of criminals and make the world a better place. So good luck. Thank you, Mike, and have a great day.